Are you suffering from endometriosis and tired of hearing every doctor you meet say that IVF is your only option? In this video, I will break down why jumping into IVF straight away might not be your best move. So before we dive into this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap the bell icon for more insights on women's health and fertility. What about if this works? In my opinion, the endometriosis is very severe indeed. I can try and remove some of it, but I'm afraid science isn't entirely ready for you yet. Thankfully, we are in an age where endometriosis patients can conceive naturally thanks to advancements in modern surgery. Endometriosis is a chronic condition where tissues which are similar to the lining of the uterus start growing outside it. This can lead to severe pain and of course challenges with fertility. So how exactly does endometriosis impact fertility? One way is by kinking the fallopian tubes which may stop them from functioning normally. On an ultrasound, this can sometimes look similar to a condition called Called as hydrosalphings. But unlike hydrosalphings, these tubes are very often still functional. But unfortunately, in many IVF centers, these normal tubes are unnecessarily clipped in the name of treating hydrosalphings. And that completely ruins your chances of conceiving naturally. Secondly, endometriosis also causes inflammation in the reproductive organs which can directly affect the egg quality, making embryo implantation more difficult. Chocolate cysts or endometriomas are another challenge. They compress the normal ovarian follicles, putting them in a state of stasis which means they stop functioning like they should. In today's video, we are not going to talk about managing pain in endometriosis because that's a completely different ball game. Today, we are going to talk about only enhancing your fertility. Here are the investigations we need before we start any treatment. A pelvic ultrasound or an MRI is critical to assess the extent of the endometriosis. However, Here's the problem I frequently see in India. Many reports completely miss out on endometriosis or endometriotic nodules because the radiologists are not trained to examine them closely enough. In fact, I've had patients who were told they had unexplained infertility simply because the ultrasound report did not mention the signs of endometriosis. This can be incredibly frustrating for patients and that is why in my practice i always review the mras or ct scans myself to look for endometriosis a hsg or a histosalphingography is also very important because it gives us valuable insights onto the patency of the fallopian tubes and the likelihood of treatment success it's also vital not to overlook the male factor as well a simple semen analysis ensures that any issues on this front are identified and addressed much before starting treatment for endometriosis. Coming to treatment, I always prioritize giving women a chance of natural conception early on, especially if they have very small endometriomas or chocolate cysts. For younger women, I generally start them off with ovulation induction medications like clomiphene citrate or letrozole for around two to four cycles. And if that fails, my step would be super ovulation. This method enhances the number of eggs produced every cycle and should be ideally tried out for three to four cycles before moving to more advanced treatments. For couples where the sperm parameters are slightly off or they suffer from sexual dysfunction, a super ovulation coupled with an IUI is a great option. And now for women with larger endometriomas or those who haven't had success with the less invasive options, a surgical excision becomes the next logical step. A lot of research shows that large endometriomas can disrupt the folliculogenesis and oocyte quality by prematurely activating the primordial follicles. During laparoscopic excision surgery, we carefully remove the endometriomas and these endometriotic lesions while also correcting the tubal defects, if there are any. This procedure restores the normal pelvic environment which can significantly improve the pregnancy rates. Monsanto and all have demonstrated that surgical removal of endometriotic lesions also reduces both the local and the systemic inflammation which is caused by this disease. But before planning the surgery, having an AMH or an anti mullerian hormone level tested is absolutely important. Surgery on the ovary requires delicate balance between a conservative and a radical approach. Too conservative and the problem may persist. Too radical and you risk compromising the ovarian reserve. That is why choosing a specialist who is experienced in endometriotic surgery is very very crucial. Striking the right balance, what I call the middle ground, can yield the 
best fertility outcomes for you. If you are curious to know how we perform endometriosis surgery, click the pop-up here to watch the whole surgery. Now with patients who have deep infiltrating endometriosis, the post-operative pregnancy rates have been reported to be around 43.8%, with the average time from surgery to pregnancy being around 11 to 12 months. Now, one of the tools we use to predict the pregnancy outcomes after a laparoscopic excision is called as the Endometriosis Fertility Index, also known as the EFI. And according to a study by Kian et al., patients with a high EFI score showed significant natural conception rates within six months post-surgery. Now, with patients who have rectal endometriosis, the results are even more encouraging. A study showed that 81% of women achieve pregnancy with 59% of these conceptions occurring naturally. Interestingly, women who are advised to attempt natural conception achieve pregnancy significantly earlier than those who are referred for IVF. Now, if you're curious to see how we treat rectal endometriosis, click the pop-up over here after you finish with this video. A question I get asked quite often is, can't we just do IVF instead of surgery? Now, here is the main problem with that method. Endometriosis can often affect the quality of the eggs produced, which means not every egg collected translates into a healthy embryo. And the persistent inflammation caused by the unexcised endometriosis can lower your implantation rates and also increase the risk of miscarriage. IVF is not only expensive, it's also emotionally taxing and it does not guarantee a success in pregnancy. Most patients with endometriosis end up needing two to three cycles of IVF before achieving a successful pregnancy. And here's another interesting finding. A study showed that patients who had already undergone two or more IVF cycles, the post-operative pregnancy rates after surgery was around 43.8% out of which 21.8% of pregnancies were spontaneous. If you ask me, I'd say it's often a very good idea to address this endometriosis before your embryo transfer. In fact, if your fertility clinic has the resources, endometriosis surgery can be coupled with your egg collection in the same sitting, reducing the number of procedures that you have to undergo. See, in countries like United States, a significant number of patients opt for IVF rather than surgery because more number of doctors are trained to perform IVF than excision surgeries. This has resulted in a massive data set for IVF, which in my opinion, naturally pushes the recommendation in its favor. And on the other hand, in studies which are involving excision surgery, always highlights pain relief, recurrence rates, and complication rates alone. Pregnancy after surgery is often treated only as an observation rather than the central focus. See, what I'm trying to say is many patients achieve natural pregnancies after surgery, but that's something that you don't see always reflected in the status. Me and my excision surgery colleagues will definitely watch for that. Ultimately, the choice between surgery and IVF really depends on individual circumstances. But it's important to understand both sides of the story when you're making a very crucial decision. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more such evidence-based content on fertility and women's health. And if you have been navigating your own fertility journey with endometriosis, I'd love to hear your story. Let me know in the comments down below.